Welcome back to Desperate Living. Now, over the years, I've built up quite a large collection of film memorabilia, be it posters, stills, press books, brochures, whatever else comes along to help promote a movie, at least what did come along to promote movies back in the pre-digital era. And I should probably be sharing some of that stuff with you. It's a co combination of material bought for work reasons, to maybe illustrate articles or books that I was writing, or because they're particular favourite movies of mine. Sometimes those things will cross over. But I haven't bought anything for a long time. I feel like I've probably got more than enough as it is. So I haven't actively been pursuing any, any poster collections, stills, haven't been really going to the places that sell those things anymore didn't feel like something that I needed to carry on getting when I have a limited amount of space. But just the other day I came across a collection online that I just couldn't resist. The combination of price and content just made it something that I thought I have to get. And here it is, having arrived today. Let's open up and have a look inside. So what I have here is a collection of uh, memory serbs, about a hundred, maybe just under, maybe just over, um, German promotional brochures from the 1950s and 1960s primarily, I believe. Now, we put the bag aside. These have all, or mostly all, been hole punched, obviously kept in some kind of brochure, which if you're the sort of obsessive collector who is fixated on, um, you know, mint condition and blah 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 over the actual contents of stuff, then that immediately makes these worthless. But for me, um, these are fascinating collection, certainly they were from looking at the, the still images of them, of, of really interesting titles. So they're not all particularly films that I'm interested in, but enough of them are to make the purchase worthwhile. And we should have a look what we've got. I mean, sitting on top of the pile here is um, this James Dean brochure, which is a curious one. It's in an odd number of pages. It seems to be in slightly worse condition than, than everything else, but this is covering all of the James Dean films. Um, yeah, quite a quite a curious thing. It's like, uh, six pages is is an odd amount, but yeah, interesting. Now, not being a native German speaker, I'm probably going to mangle quite a lot of the titles here. Apologies in advance if you are German, feel free to correct me in your head, you don't need to actually do it in any, any other way. Handily, a lot of these German movies that are actually just German editions of Foreign films, American films, British films, French films, etc., um, do have the original title. So, for instance, here we have Le Clochard, which has been translated into Im Kitchen ist keine Zimmer frei. Um, I'm also not going to try and translate those titles for you. Um, But here's something that looks more, more fun. Um, oh, eight, an eight page brochure here. Um, for the Vert House, first house from Dartmoor. Um, which has the feel of something that might have been one of the Edgar Wallace films. They are often said on Dartmoor. It doesn't appear to be that though. Um, but it's a, maybe it is, I don't know. Um, there's no reference to Wallace 
as far as I can see here. Um, but it's obviously a, a, a gritty crime film. Um, here's another film that I guess is German, Jacqueline, Jacqueline. Which uh, seems to be some kind of uh, romantic musical endeavor. That looks, looks fun. Now here's something a bit more interesting, perhaps. Les Amants. The Louis Mal movie. Just a full page for this one. But yeah, big fan of Louis Mal stuff. So that's something great. The Naked and the Dead. Here we go. This one's got a colour cover. For the, uh, the classic American, uh, American war movie. Fantastic artwork, isn't it? That's Sieben Opfer. And here we go. Now we're into Edgar Wallace territory. Or technically Brian Edgar Wallace. Uh, the great man's son who continued to write crime stories. For those of you unfamiliar with Wallace, I mean, he was staggeringly popular in Germany, a British writer who just had more and more and more movies based on his work than probably any other writer. Uh, in the 60s, there was a, a wild German series of Edgar Wallace movies and a somewhat less wild British series of movies based on Edgar Wallace stories. So plenty of adaptations. Uh, he seems to have slipped into obscurity these days, which is a real shame. But yeah, this is great. I love the Wallace stuff. I've got the uh, both the German and the British box sets, um, which we should probably have a look at at some point. Uh, directed by um, F.J. Gottlieb, who was a regular director of this kind of thing before moving on to do a lot of sex comedies in the 1970s. Brilliant. You see... That and a few other titles essentially makes the purchase of this entire collection worthwhile. La Vie Prévie. Um, so another French movie. Another Louis Mal movie. Another great cast here, Bridget Bardot. Marcello Mastrioni. So, and another great bit of poster art. Um, well, this is curious. Um, this is like a um, mock-up of a newspaper. Um, it's a poster, obviously. It's the longest day. Ah, oh, well, there you go. That's interesting. That kind of real interesting promo sheet that's got some kind of uh, fake war newspaper. Wow, brilliant. I'm, I'm really kind of uh, kind of knocked out by that. That's really good. I hadn't even realised something like that was in here. Last Train from Gun Hill, classic western, directed by John Sturgis. A four-page brochure here. Good dramatic shot of Kirk Douglas there. If nothing else, this is making me interested in seeking out some of these movies that I haven't actually seen. Here's a good bit of uh, Italian swashbuckling action, directed by Riccardo Freuda, the classic um, horror and cult movie director, who was the contemporary, of course, of Mario Baba. This is one of those great historical dramas. Not so much dramas, more like an action film, I suppose. Um, Starring Brett Halsey, uh, Gabrielle Tinti, who uh, of course is better known as uh, Mr. Laura Gemser. Another Italian film here, The Last Days of Pompeii. 
more dramatic peplum adventure. And here's another one that's uh, got a colour cover. Hesa happened Hong Kong. Looks like dramatic stuff set in the uh, the mysterious world of Hong Kong, which would have, of course, been very exotic at that time. Captain Sinbad. Well, yeah, we don't um, need to have that one translated for us, do we? This is the uh, the Byron Haskin film, the the American movie. Um, not to be confused with the uh, the films that Ray Harryhausen worked on. There were no giant monsters in um, in this particular Sinbad, but it is it is quite a good little movie, a fun movie. I wouldn't say good. More Western adventure, the classic gunfight at the OK Corral, another John Sturgis movie. Burt Lancaster, Kirk Douglas, and I'm sure that many of you are familiar with this film. Again, a good dramatic bit of cover art. And another Western, The Badlanders. So here we have um, Ernest Bognine, Alan Ladd. Notice that all of these, well, most of these seem to be printed on kind of um, sepia rather than in straight black and white. And here we've got John Wayne in North to Alaska. So I'm not I'm not a John Wayne fan, has to be said. I'm not a Westerns fan, to be honest. Not not American Westerns, not of this era. Um, big fan of the uh, the spaghetti westerns and the U.S. westerns that were being made, kind of late '60s into the early '70s. The kind of grittier stuff, the stuff that was influenced by spaghetti westerns, I suppose. But yeah, the the classic era of westerns is not something that I'm big on. But here. Yes, something quite interesting. Will success spoil Rock Hunter? Brilliant. Jay Mansfield, of course. I love this movie so much. Frank Tashlin, classic. Uh, with, uh, with Tony Randall. Um, fantastic cast. Very funny. Still stands up really well. And of course, you know, we, we love Jay Mansfield here at Desperate Living. As indeed everybody should. So, again, kind of worth... The, uh, the price by itself almost. Another Western, Last of the Fast Guns. A bit, uh, a bit of a letdown after Rock Hunter, but there you go. Now what do we have here? Die Katz auf dem heißen Blechdach. Well, they... Oh my god, yes. So I'm too busy trying to read the actual title of the film to look at the stills. And of course, it's Cat on a Hot Tin Roof. Uh, yes, <laughs> Tennessee Williams film. Elizabeth Taylor, Paul Newman. You know. Yeah. Okay, look. Reminder to self, look at the pictures, not just the title. Well, that's great. Fantastic. This, so far, has been an amazing haul. Half of these I didn't even recognise in the stills that I saw because they were partly covered up. It was a bit of a blurry image. So I was kind of guessing that, of what I might be getting. You know, there was enough stuff that I spotted up front to think, yep, yeah, that's good, to make the purchase a good gamble. But, but I'm hugely impressed at how much good classic stuff there is in here. Like the Defiant Ones. The classic um, crime movie. And uh, crime movie? Is it really a crime movie? I don't know. You know what I mean. It's kind of melodrama. The, the great Stanley Kramer movie with uh, Tony Curtis and Sidney Poitier. Brilliant stuff. Great. I mean, I've got to get all this stuff back online, in print, do something with it. I don't know. But, you know, it's. I don't feel that all this stuff should just sit buried in, in my own folders, my own files, needs to be shared with the world, which is kind of what I'm doing here, I suppose, but, you know, maybe in a more kind of tangible sense. Stay with me on this. Um, so here's um, 
Chamond Garçons, which looks, yeah, it's a musical, um, French movie, yeah. So another cinematic great, Rio Bravo, Howard Hawks film. I'm sure I don't need to tell you much about that movie. Or indeed, shouldn't need to tell you much about the bridge on the River Kwai, but this one, interestingly, still has the cinema ticket attached to the front. Um, so, when they, whoever owned these originally, they went on uh, Monday the 2nd of June. Um, doesn't say which year. But, yeah. There we go, another nice little kind of addition. There. Oh, and this one, nice kind of colour inside as well. So obviously a, a prestige item. And another German movie here, Rosen für den Staatsanwalt, which, yep, looks like another another melodrama. It's got more people in uniform on it. I suppose lots of these stories would have had to go hanging on back to the war years, which is, yeah, just fascinating. Les Girls. Another kind of musical classic. Gene Kelly, of course, directed by George Cukor. Nice little brochure for that one. Here's another... Um, of the um, uh, German crime movies, which interestingly has Christopher Lee midway down the cast. Um, underneath people like Peter Van Eyck and Marianne Koch. Um, who I think we can say he's probably more famous than. But yeah, Lee was making a lot of uh, a lot of international films around this time, and so this is obviously one of his. One of his crime movies. Now we come to the titles that essentially tipped the balance for me when I was pondering this. And it's like, yes, I have to have it because Mondo Carne. Lordy, I mean, I have a lot of uh, Mondo publicity material which uh, was gathered together for for a book project some years ago that, uh, that never finally came off but you know I'll still pick up Mondo material if I if I find it and it's reasonably priced that's so brilliant that's such a fantastic cover and similarly uh, from the same directors um, from uh, Gautiero Giacopetti and uh, Franco Prosperi Women of the World which is kind of like a Mondo Carne light um, you know, maybe a kind of leftover footage, so you know, more, not more fun than Monocane, but um, you know, if you're distressed by some of the more brutal images in Monocane, there were none of those in here, so it's, it's an easier entrance point. Great film. Last night of the Titanic, or a night to remember, as you as you may know it, the the better film dealing with the Titanic, directed course by Roy Baker, Roy Ward Baker as he later became known when he was working for Hammer. Big, big movie, big starry cast. Um, so Chance or the Nacte de Birgit Maelstrom. So this is a Swedish film and we know what they say about Swedish films or at least what they used to say about Swedish films back in these days so you know probably probably a bleak film with a few sexy scenes in it so Wives and Lovers another American film Janet Lee, Van Johnson not a particularly well loved or remembered film these days of course but you know it's, it's not awful is um, 
Die Halbzata. Directed by Rob Thiel, um, with Romy Schneider. This has... I'm not quite sure what this is. Looks maybe like it's a bit of a... A kind of... What passes for a youth film? I don't know. De Hurst von St. Pauli. St. Pauli having that reputation as a bit of a, a saucy area, and I imagine that there's, you know, sinful behavior, music as well. It's interesting that the musicals have like the lyrics to the songs on the back of here as well, so you can theoretically sing along in the cinema if you so wish. So, my 99 Barota. So, this is... Looks like... Looks like fairly lightweight melodrama stuff. I like the cover. Here's another classic. Some like it hot. There's uh, Olympiad two. So these are the this is the um, Lenny Riefenstahl movie, um, the 1936 Olympics. Uh, yeah, I mean this isn't from 1936. It has to be said. I mean it references inside her 1956. So I guess that's when it was being shown. Um, but yeah, there's a. I know that there's one for part one as well here, which we'll come across soon. Another great favorite movie, La Dolce Vita. Hopefully, you don't need La Dolce Vita introducing to you, but yeah, some great imagery here. And some great imagery on the cover of this one too, of Venusburg which looks very much like some kind of um, sex melodrama from the days before they actually made sex films. I could be completely wrong on that. If you're uh, German or you're familiar with these movies, by all means feel free to chip in and tell me how I don't know what I'm talking about in the comments. So Schloss grips, grips home. This half whole pages here looks yeah, looks like a romantic comedy. Um, oh, it's got actual cast interviews. Regarde. So this is a, yeah, another Swedish movie that, what would they call these at the time? Provocative, I suppose. Uh, it certainly looks like it might be provocative stuff. I'm not quite sure what's going on here. Bachelor of Hearts. It's, yeah. British comedy film directed by Wolf Rilla. It's quite it's cute. Not a film that I'm a big fan of, has to be said. Here's a very interesting one. The Great Dictator. Charlie Chaplin, of course. And here's the first part of the Olympiad as we, as we promised. El Hakim, directed by Rolf Thiel. Um, another um, international exotic drama. This one set in Egypt. And again, something that I'm familiar with. 
De Brugge. Oh, hello, this is interesting. De Brugge is yet another war movie. Um, looks like quite a dark war movie, as you might expect. And here's a little kind of additional leaflet that was inside there. So that again, that's, that's quite nice. Est war die erste Liebe. So a story of uh, first love. There you go. More wartime action. The story of GI Joe, not the uh, not the action figure, obviously. Um, uh, you know, Robert Mitchum, Burg Burgess Meredith, uh, directed by William A. Wellman. And east of Sudan. So uh, this one's a bit a bit creased up. I have to kind of flatten that out. Uh, yeah, another another British movie. Uh, another British kind of action adventure tale. Le Tricus. Marcel uh, Carney. And yeah, it looks like a tale of wild youth. There's something that has the feel of um, teen idols to it. Freddy and uh, Fremden Sternum. And uh, you see inside Freddy's there with his guitar. He's with his guitar on the back as well. And he's with his guitar throughout the entire thing, so I'm assuming that uh, this is all kind of pop idol stuff with uh, with Freddy, Freddy Quinn, I'm playing Freddy, of course, being some kind of a singing icon. Another classic, Witness for the Prosecution, Billy Wilder movie, of course. Um, Charles Lawton there, um, Tyrone Power. Very nice. Five Miles to Midnight. But yeah, well, great cast here. I mean, Sophia Loren, Anthony Perkins, Gig Young. Yeah, brilliant. Possibly the best thing here, from my point of view. Girls Town, the brilliant Mamie Van Doren film. Uh, I love Girls Town, I love it. I love old Mamie stuff from this era. And yeah, what a, what a find. A Hat Full of Rain, which is, you know, kind of more mainstreamy. American drama, good stuff. And here's another kind of teen, teen idol movie. Bendy Connie met M. Peter, which is teenager melody. So, <laughs> so full of um, full of jolly pop songs and teen romance, no doubt. Songs like um, the Jolly Joker. How boys, how do you do? Sugar baby. This looks like uh, teen stuff too, but maybe a bit more dramatic. It's certainly a lot of action going on inside. Sultry cover. Man with guitar on the back. More John Wayne. The Comancheros. So another another classic western. As is this one, Big Country, with um, Gregory Pack, directed by William Wyler. 
So this isn't just a collection of um, any old crap. These are quite significant movies quite a lot of the time. So French costume drama here. La Tour Perens Gare. And Hardy Kruger, Kruger in The One That Got Away. It's a British war film. Um, with starring a German. And directed again by Roy Baker, Roy Ward Baker as would be. Another great Italian cult film here. Hercules. Steve Reeves. Film that launched a thousand peplums. The Young Lions, or wartime drama. This one from Edward Mietrich. And more wartime drama. Strap Battalion 999. A German film. Uh, quite a few pages here. Uh, has a certain bleakness about it. I'm kind of guessing that most German movies set in World War II were not exactly jolly or kind of pumped up nationalistic action films. The Vikings. One of my uh, favourite films when I was a kid, when it used to be on TV seemingly every other week. Uh, glorious Stuff, Tony Curtis and uh, Kirk Douglas, of course. Here's another of those Italian peplums. Revolt of the Gladiators. And finally... Um, plenty of dust left on the table. And finally, we have yet another war film, Starlag 17, um, a Billy Wilder movie. <clears throat> so I have to say that I'm really pleased with this, this haul. I'm not going to tell you how much it cost, but it wasn't massively expensive and there's definitely more than enough good stuff in here to justify the price. I'll get to work on scanning some of this stuff to perhaps do something with. But uh, yeah, I hope you've enjoyed this kind of rambling look at old movie merchandise. And we'll try and dig out some more, maybe not quite as many all in one go next time. And let you see what else we've got. Feel free to like, subscribe, share. Let us know in the comments if you have your own collections of movie posters, stills, press material, etc. And what kind of content you'd like to see in the future. And if you want to help us purchase more of this kind of thing, then feel free to support us on uh, Patreon or Buy Me A Coffee. Links down below. So thanks for watching if you've made it all this far. And we'll see you again soon.